Hello, my name is Christian Cargo Smart, President and CEO of Adventist Mining Corporation. What is Adventist? We are developing the next major mine in Ecuador. It's a copper gold mine. We just released our feasibility study uh, a few days ago, showing one of the most attractive copper development projects globally. What's next is getting this into production. We also have very exciting exploration over three copper gold projects in the country. Christian, good to see you again. Um, I'm saying you were in country last week. We should talk about that in a second. But you put the feasibility study out yesterday, not the reaction you expected. What's the problem? Well, I, I've been told that uh, on average, stocks that put out a feasibility study are down 50 to 20 percent. So we're only down eight. So that must mean it's a very good feasibility study. Uh, reaction was, I would say, neutral. I was calling the sales desk. We didn't have any natural selling. At the same time, there was natural buying yet, but I think that will be coming. Uh, main focus on the study was higher capex. So in the PEA we did in summer of 2019, it showed about 180 million total capex. And this feasibility study we had 248. Keep in mind, we went directly from a PEA to a fees. That's a little bit uh, daring of companies to do. But there's good reason for uh, why that capex went up. The main reason has to do with earthworks. So we did a significant uh, geo geotechnical and hydrogeological drilling as part of this feasibility study. Uh, and through that, we discovered that the assumptions of using tough material to build a lot of the tailing stem is not going to make it. We need to have more fresh rock or andesite material. So that means we got to move stripping that was in the sustaining capex of the PEA up front into initial capex to have that fresh rock to build a tailing stand. So sustaining capex is lower in this study, initial capex is higher. Also geotechnically related for the process plant, we need to dig deeper down to fresh rock to build a process plant, whereas previously we're just having it on the surface. That's the main reason for the capex vote. It's all earth movements bring it up to the front. Man, how did they get it so wrong? I mean, we're talking tens of millions of dollars there. I mean, you must have had some choices to make that. Well, that, well did you have choices to make or were you, you come to the dawning realization that this thing has only got one solution and this is it and it's a lot more expensive than you, than you thought? The tailings design is uh, best technologies, uh, best for fit for purposes for, for the area. It's a conventional downstream tailings. Some people might say, why is it not dry stack? It just rains too much in Ecuador. Uh, so the, the, the design and the location hasn't changed much. But nobody in a PA, let alone feasibility studies for some juniors, does geotechnical drilling until later on. And the geotechnical drilling is typically what kills uh, construction stage or con construction uh, projects in terms of capital creep, delays, those kind of things. Look at Rainy River in, in Canada. Uh, costing an extra half a billion dollars because of a lack of definition in geotechnical. So you just don't do it at a PEA. You do it at a feasibility study. Not everyone does it. They sometimes wait to detail engineering. We did it. And the result is we got to, we had to do additional engineering and move some earth movements around. Okay, does this cause problems for your ability to go and raise money to get this thing built out? You brought, okay, you brought some of the, ca the CapEx forward. You've explained why. Um, but what is the cost of that to you? And not just in terms of the capex, but the cost of the money that you're now going to have to go out and raise. One, can you? And two, do you think it's going to be more expensive? That's the key question that people should be asking. So between 180 million in the PEA when the copper price was $3 a pound to now 248 when the copper price is 450 a pound, uh, in a market where everyone is looking for copper development projects, do you think 248 is not financeable? It's absolutely financeable. And based on what I see in terms of financing interest and strategic investment interest, there's a big disconnect between that and the and overall market. That's why we put in that press release right at the top that we are in advanced stages of negotiating $240 million of non-equity financing. Now, some people might not believe that, uh, but we've got a pretty reputable board. We wouldn't have put that in there if, if we didn't believe it. And some people might say, well, that's the most geared project that I've ever seen. Well, that's because the margins are incredible. If you flip this project around in gold terms, which many of your viewers might understand better, we're producing 90,000 ounces of gold equivalent a year for 14 years at an all-in-sustaining cost of 360 US an ounce. 
that would put at lowest 10% cash cost of any uh, gold pr producing asset globally. Assets like that that are market currently trade over a billion market cap. So uh, the margins are there. There's lots to play with in terms of uh, non-equity financing solutions. And I think the market will be surprised about how little equity we need to build this. Well, how much do you need? So in theory, you can finance this based on options and table with no equity, but no one's going to do that. Uh, the total capex to go to commercial production, including corporate GNA allocation for expiration, et cetera, is 285 million US. So if strictly on the surface, we do 240 non-equity, that leaves 45 million US of equity. But uh, in that 248, we include 25 million US for value added tax. We're currently negotiating with the government of Ecuador to do a fulsome package, give and take. I expect that VAT to drop maybe by 10 million. Uh, so we're looking at 35 million US of equity. Okay, okay. And okay, so where, 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 so where are you? You're in discussion at the moment with groups. That's what, that's what we're saying in terms of the, the debt package. And the equity clearly going to come to market unless you've got some sort of strategic partner that is going to stump up with it. So, what do you so think we also it? talk in the release about reviewing strategic alternatives, including corporate transactions, right? So it's a, it's a holistic approach, co compare and contrasting M&A versus going it alone. We say that, that that process will be concluded by the end of the first quarter. We do have M&A nicely bubbling along. Uh, I'm not going to give any further commentary on that. But on, on the project financing side, I'm confident that we can have a fully financed project uh, on the non-equity side by the end of January. So we announced a $200 million piece followed by another 40 to 50 million piece with a group leaving the remaining equity component to be financed at a later date. We don't have to do it in January. We can wait for the price to rebound, re-rate, uh, and do that equity at our leisure. Okay, so what does this feasibility study do for you at a local level? Because it, it, it seemed to me, reading it, it answers a few technical questions, a few engineering questions, which may be sort of outstanding. Um, was, that, was that part of the way that you, you built it? Because you're going to need permits, Right, and to do that, you need to, you need to answer those questions. Do you, do you think you've done that, or do you think there's more work to do? This some some companies do feasibility studies for the sake of selling it, promotional document. Others do it on the on the basis of building it. I would say it's the latter here. Uh, we spoke with the government of Ecuador last week about this is uh, a mine that we that can be built that should be built during your term. So it's full speed ahead in terms of detail engineering and moving this project forward. The feasibility study has answered all the technical aspects of the project to the highest standards in, in, in our view. The metallurgy has improved substantially with very clean concentrates. We improved the recoveries for the base metals. The resource is uh, improved with copper grades up 9%. We've got maiden reserves. When's the last time you saw a junior company with 50% of the reserves in the proven category? Um, and, and the list goes on. Uh, so I'm very... Uh, confident on on building this project as as outlined. Keep in mind it's also plus or minus ten percent contingency, which you rarely see for a feasibility study, and that's because of all of the capital costing items are nearly all were based on on actual quotes over the last few months, and we focused on using Ecuadorian contractors. So the next step here is detail engineering, which will uh, finalize everything ahead of full-scale construction in October or November of next year. Okay, so when you say we talk to the government, who's we and who's the government? I was in Ecuador last Tuesday meeting the president and several of the ministers required for final uh, sign-off on the project. 90-minute meeting, I was there with our partners, the Salazars, the country manager, it was an all-hands-on-deck meeting, very constructive. Uh, lots of nice things to say about the Salazars, also the dynamic between Adventist and Salazar, and also one of our major shareholders, Novus. Uh, at the end of the meeting, we had a few items that we wanted to uh, kind of accelerated activity uh, from the government on. Uh, La President Lasso uh, addressed the room indicating this is an important project for the country. He'd like to see the permits and authorizations move forward on time without any issues. Uh, and Surprise, surprise, a few days later, some of those asks were delivered to us. Uh, so 
it's uh, as good as it gets. Uh, but when you say some of these asks were delivered, what you, and you're talking permits in the same breath, what, what do you mean? What was delivered a few days later? Well, one of the one of the key things was we needed to upgrade the uh, small scale mining license to medium scale in order to submit our ESIA. That was in process, but we discussed about the importance of getting that done so we can submit the ESIA immediately to get the clock started on that. So that was granted uh, uh, last week. That means we're submitting our ESA in a few weeks. Okay. Okay. Good news. Can I can I just talk about you mentioned Salazar there? Um, obviously, you know Freddie Salazar, lo lo local guy, really well known. They're twenty five percent holder of your asset. Is that going to be a problem for you further down the line? Like, say, if someone does want to have a look at this and go, do you know, what? I need a copper asset. I need all of this copper asset. Is that going to be problematic? I would say, on the contrary, it it actually is a comfort to certain uh, corporates because. They know the Salazars being Ecuadorian, their history in the country. Maybe they want to step in Adventist issues, but want to keep the relationship with the Salazars. So it's it's a uh, it's optionality. Some of them want to take out the whole um, whole, whole project, but the Salazars are fully up to speed in everything that we're doing, and uh, they're supportive of you know, a transaction to uh unitize or to sell 100 percent of the asset if, if if the price of course makes sense okay i'm just just looking at your the, the, your multiples to nav you're about 0.3.5 right it's it, it, you, you're nothing you're, you're quite low compared to your peers do you think that you've got to deliver on this equity component the debt the debt component i hear what you're saying it's it's, it's attractive and you know, not, not a stretch at this rate, but the, the equity component will be a moment for the market to go, actually, I, I think these guys are able to deliver, as will the permit. Do you think that's going to fix this whole, this multiple to nav at the moment? You know, you think because your peers are around 0 0.6, 0 0.7, compared to your 0 0.3, 0 0.35. Don't get me started on that one. Uh, you know, we're, we're I compare a Curry Pomba to uh, two projects, um, lots of Pluses and minuses on both, but both are very good quality. One is Adriatic's project in Bosnia. Same tonnage, high grade, uh, almost the same life of mine, cumulative free cash flow. Also silver crest metals in Mexico. Same type of project. We have slightly higher capex than those two, but over life of mine is almost the same cumulatively cumulative free cash flow. Those companies are trading at six to ten times our market cap. So I guess I'm a really bad marketing guy. Uh, I've done something really wrong here, or maybe that's the opportunity for the market. Is it Ecuador? I'm, I don't think it's that. Look at Solaris, look at Sogo, look at Lundin Gold. Um, is it because of the financing, perceived financing overhang? Well, if you believe the 240 million of non-equity finance, that really should uh, give a lot of comfort that there's not a $100 million equity financing coming. Maybe, as you say, that is a de-risking item when we announce those packages and people see how you know, how it's being financed and how, how little equity to go. Um, outside of that, I think it's uh, marketing the story, getting out in front of institutions over the next month, explaining what I'm talking to you about, explaining how it compares to other projects, the path to production is real, and the ability to finance and execute on this is, is real. Yeah, see, for me, I don't think the, the money's actually not the, the stretch in, in this. It's the timing of the permit. And based on what you're telling us of your conversations last week, it feels like they are you know, very keen for this to happen. So that, that, I think that's the new news for me. Yeah, the, the, the conversation with the, uh, with the various ministries is eight months. They will promise to give it to us in, within eight months. Um, we are assuming in our execution schedule 12 months, so starting at the end of next year construction. If it's quicker, we can start you know, a few months sooner. It's not an issue for the other developers or explorers in Ecuador, but maybe they've got the expiration angle going for them versus we're more like a permitting out of our control uh, stage of the company. But we've also got this M&A angle uh, too, and, and not everyone invests uh, you know, for the promise of M&A. But why wouldn't take your pick a uh, base metal producer in the half a billion to two billion market cap range, not want to have an asset that has cumulative free cash flow over 14 years of 650 million bucks over um, using long-term pricing? It's, it's, uh, 
the difference maker for many of those producers to go from, let's say, a third quartile cash cost uh, producer to maybe a first quartile or a second quartile, it's something that is very financeable either with their cash, cash flow, or access to capital. Uh, so that's the premise for multiple groups looking at the company today. Okay, Kirsten. Well, like I'm, I'm going to listen out for the non-equity financing announcement. That's, that's and the equity component to it as well, and how quickly you can do that. Um, so, look, stay in touch. Let's know how you get on. But congrats on the feasibility study. I, I think it's the the, the the moving of the equity. I think perhaps has maybe caught a few people out, but the reasons why you've done it make a lot of sense. So, um, you know, appreciate you coming on and talking about it. Yeah, uh, maybe the last piece, uh, just to be clear for your viewers, we've got ten million US in the bank. We're not raising any equity this year. Perhaps there's some that had assumed we will be. Our cash takes us to the second quarter of next year. We will execute either on the, the non-equity uh, project piece, project financing pieces, or perhaps the sale of the company before we go back to the market. And that may not actually be the broader market. It could be just one strategic that, that fits, the, fits the piece. So I'll definitely be on here once that is announced, whether it be M&A versus project financing.